Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. Well under 20 total carbs today. Listen, are you frustrated? Are you ready to throw in the towel? Do you keep feeling that you're more hungry than you are? You get anxious. It just doesn't seem to be working. Why is everybody else having success with keto? And for me, I'm like splat against the wall every day. I wake up hungry. I go to bed hungry. My anxiety is just out of control. What is going on? How come this isn't working? Well, that's why I always talk about our journey being that of a turtle. It's slow. Sometimes it's not steady. We consistently tune in every day to our own program and say, I'm going to try it again. Let me just, just give it that one more shot of what she talks about here on this channel. I'm just gonna put it in. I'm going to show up, pull up the panties and try one more day. And who knows, yesterday could have been okay. You could have stayed abstinent to your program, but it was emotionally rough. But that's because you're not running to your comfort foods. Remember, if you're my age or anything over 50, you could have had decades of running to your comfort foods. I began overeating like a little piggy, probably at around, you know, 10. Um, as soon as I started babysitting, which was nine, and, and having other people's pantries <laughs> available to me. And so, you know, there's a lot of learning that we have to do, a lot of understanding. And each day we could get a better grasp of what works for us you know, I want to go to bed. I want to put down, I want to push away from the table at satiated, at content. My addict might keep saying, but you're not full yet. Well, I always say, Ms. Slick, back off. Because I know within 20 minutes, you know, doing what I have to do, flossing my teeth or doing dishes or drying them and putting them away, it's going to hit the full button not the stuffed button. I don't want the stuffed button anymore. The stuffed button for me crosses that line into, I can just keep eating and I don't know why. All I know is that as an active overeater, I had years of eating too much, crossing the line and then keeping on going, pushing away from the table as satiated. And I've come to learn what works for that. What amount of food on my, my plates, my salad plate or my dinner plate, you know, and it could be, could be just the bread and butter fiesta plate with a pork chop on it, which is what I'm having tonight. And so it, it just, it is what it is. And um, it kind of works. I just accept that this is the way of eating that I have chosen and I just go with it. Um, for other people, it could be quitting smoking, quitting drinking. It could be, um, you know, accepting um, going to church for a certain religion that you weren't on board with, but the rest of the family does. So you kind of in your heart want to do what the rest of the people do. You know, we just, we all have our reasons for where we have to bucket, bucket up, honey, soak it up, stand up, woman up, man up, and just do what we need to do. And it's not always easy. And if you're like me, then you had decades of, well, I'm upset. I must be hungry. I'm happy. I must be hungry. It's there. It's right over there at that buffet table. I must be hungry. I'm sad. I must be hungry. I'm lonely. I must be hungry. I'm tired. I'm definitely hungry. That was always my default is uh, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing and having more food that won't help. Having more food always made it work for me until it didn't. And so in my journey of going, you know, in my head of knowing what I was doing, spark people tracking 12 years ago or so. And then um, I guess it was Weight Watchers, low carb, high fat, keto, Keto under 20, now keto like trying to aim for under 10 or 15 each day, total carbs. Each 
Each time I invite something new into my way of eating, it's for approved feeling, just a, just a feeling better, feeling more abstinent, feeling more clean, feeling more satiated with what I have. You know, it's after a whole bunch of tweaking has gone on. And the more that I listen to, especially carnivore women, but um, videos with people that are very much in touch with their head and their gut, they will find that just a simple certain ingredient could definitely, you know, trigger the whole thing. Something that they had that they never thought of as um, a, necessarily a, a thing they shouldn't have or an innocuous thing, I guess I would say, like maybe eggs, maybe dairy, maybe veggies. All of a sudden, it's like, could this be antagonizing my food plan, my way of eating, my lifestyle, my showing up, or am I going to bed at the end of the day feeling as optimum as I can? And it's like, really? Now you're telling me that this has an effect on me? I've always done it this way. Why isn't it working that way? <sighs> and so then adjusting. And then there's sometimes when I'm listening to somebody um, a peer or a doctor um, about something that they do and they say something that like, oh, maybe I could add that in and feel better. You know, it was a long time before I understood electrolytes, before I understood and accepted salts, understood, accepted, and began having more salts. I put pink Himalayan salt in my coffee, in my water. I put Redmond's ancient grain salt on my food when I'm having my OMAD. I put my Celtic salt crystals on my tongue before I have some mineral water. I prefer mineral water over all the other types of waters because at least there's some minerals in there, some um, sodium, potassium, magnesium, sometimes calcium. And those things do make a difference. And I, I didn't do them for a long time. So now that I do, I can see the difference. It does bump my energy. It does tell my, you're hungry, eat something you shouldn't, Ms. Slick, quiets her, and I can go on with my day feeling a little bit um, like I will make it to the next meal. I will make it to the next day. I will make it tonight. I will not cave to a, a trigger or a craving, especially a carb craving. And after giving up sugars and grains, in two weeks, my sugar craving just went away, just totally went away. Um, I believe in good fats for women. And so uh, how many do I have usually? I usually have like 110, 100 and something, something. Let's see what I typically have. Um, well, today it's 117, 118 grams of fat. In fact, I'll just show you this right now. I'm having that par pork chop cooked in uh, coconut oil. So my calories for the day are 1,300. My protein is 62 grams. My carbs are three. And my fat is 118. And that is definitely a formula that works for me. And in those th three total carbs, I'm having 50 grams of baby butter lettuce organic from Organic Girl that I got at Whole Foods. And um, that's about it. And oh, the cottage cheese has some carbs in it too. And so that's it. And that's where those three carbs come from. And I will go to bed feeling satiated. I will have my meal. I will push away from the table at satiated and content. And I know that one, I'm not gonna starve. Two, that there probably won't be cravings. Plus, I have my little routines after my last bite that say to me, girly, you're done. You're done, sweetie. Go floss. Go water pick. Go dry the dishes and put them away. Go check your clients on chronometer for the, for the end of the day. Go do something. And then I've totally forgotten that there was one little inkling inside of my head that said, you know, you want more. No. I don't want more. That's just my emotional default. So 
you know, I know a lot of you struggle with this. I always say that glass of salted water is my savior. The little bubbles in my mineral water is my savior. It keeps me, it, it just keeps me in the routine. And I've gotten so used to my routine that I, I know that when Ms. Slick <laughs> comes in underneath and tries to rob me of my sanity and my serenity and my contentment at the moment and, and start working on me to think that I'm hungry, I know it's just a ploy. It's, it's just that other part of me that um, just knows that. And so that's why <clears throat> I never forget where I came from. You know, it's very, very, very important to me to remain true and abstinent to what I put in my tracker. I put my food in my tracker, it's done, that's it. That's what I'm following for the day. Granted, I didn't, the bumps, you know, have subsided and the rocky road has subsided because I've been doing this for a number of years. But I just, I wanna show up here and show you what consistent can bring you. It can bring you a calmness, a contentedness, a, a lack of anxiety because what's there is there and, and learning to deal with it. You know, I've watched professionals, doctors that say, I'll have a tablespoon of nut butter or a tablespoon of butter on those days when I need a little bit more. They perhaps could be more active than me, but it's really not an option for me to do it that way. I kind of stick to what I put in. I have my two heavy whipping cream and butter or, and or ghee coffees um, during my intermittent fasting. So it's really a dry intermittent, uh, wet intermittent fast, a fatty, there's the word, ah, fatty intermittent fasting time. I have my one meal of the day between 2.30 and 3.30 in the afternoon. I probably could eat at 1.30 and be happy, but Greg doesn't get home until then. And so I think it's good enough that he comes home early at that time because some people are still working at five or six. So we have our one meal of the day between 2.30 and 3.30 and it holds me along with the two buttered co coffees until the next day between 2.30 and 3.30. It's just something I've gotten used to. I don't know if it's my head that got trained, my gut that got trained, or both that got trained, but that's how it works for me. And I know what to put in my day with activities or even guilty pleasure videos, things that can keep me actively not in my head thinking about food. It's still gonna happen from time to time. There are gonna be voraciously hungry days, but I don't cave. I know that at three, whether I'm looking at the clock and it's four hours away, three hours away, 90 minutes away, I will have something to eat and it holds me. I always hold out and put um, an extra tablespoon of butter into my tracker, my chronometer, in case I have to have that third hot beverage with some fat in it, but it doesn't happen. It just doesn't. So I stick to what works for me and I add things, I tweak things, I eliminate things and it just works. And that's what I wish for you too. My pickles, my snowflakes and my um, pickles and snowflakes and turtles, turtles, um, that you too will know just what works for you, just what, what your recipe is. And there are times when I'm gonna have the same thing two days in a row because it was so darn good and I'll find something for Greg because I've always got things that I can give him. Like he likes that pinwheel steak he likes that it's mozzarella and spinach and it looks like a pinwheel. Um, chicken thighs that are already cooked in the freezer that I can just take out or even a burger. You know, he's he's pretty easy because then I do all the sides for him too. And so, um, you know, that's how I roll. I just I just know the day. And, and I want for you people to understand that you too can know the day, even if you're new, and just get that calmness and anxiety-free kind of moment in your day. It works if you work it. Thanks so much for watching. You can find me if you need that one-on-one. -on -one. It's mostly behavioral. It's just getting you some new habits, eliminating the bad ones, getting you away from snacking, getting you away from binging, getting you away from crazy thinking sort of food plan. You know, I'm not a nutritionist or a scientist. I'm just somebody that learned lots over the years, over decades of dealing with my food addiction. So I will see you the next time. 
That can be found at ketocoachingsarah.com. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I can't do this without you and I don't plan on it. So have some salted water, go get another cup of coffee. We'll do this again. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now.